All right, so we are, um, we're now four companies that have been combined. We are the HL Flake Company, International Key Supply, McDonald Dash and H.E. Mitchell. We have five locations, Houston, Farmingdale, New York, Memphis, Tennessee, Jacksonville, Florida, and Portland, Oregon. Um, and again, our free freight policy is $100 order minimum. And anything under the $100 uh, amount is a flat $9.95. And then again, I just wanna make sure you guys are aware that Brenton Webb and Jamie Frederick are available as access control support specialists. Um, and really they're here just to support you, our customers. Their contact information is listed here. Uh, so feel free to reach out to these guys with any questions, uh, large or small. They can help quote projects, um, even help you with specking out what, what you might need for a particular solution. So, and one thing I may not have mentioned in the past is any of the webinars that we are producing, you can get CEU credits for Texas or Alabama. If you will email me, Travis at HL Travis .howell at hlflake.com. Um, I do ha still have a bit of a backlog that I'm working through to try to make those uh, credits. Um, but yeah, you email me and just let me know that you need a certificate and I'm flagging those emails and I will follow up uh, with the certs. Um, and all of these sessions are, are being recorded and we're posting them on YouTube. So you can check our YouTube channel uh, and go there to find find these training sessions. Any of the ones that are really the, the free sessions are, are being made available on YouTube. So now I will turn it over to Andy. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Um, appreciate that. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my full screen. Uh, and because uh, I'm going to be going back and forth between the DO window software and uh, one slide on the PowerPoint. But um, so um, yesterday, if you were with me, uh, we uh, started with the session, uh, the first of three sessions on DO Windows, and that is uh, version 5.5.3. Um, yesterday, we created an account, which was the ABC company. We created some lock profiles. Uh, we added users into the global user screen. We added those users. Uh, to the locks, the ones that needed to be uh, added uh, to the different locks, green meaning that they have uh, access, uh, red meaning that they're denied access uh, on a 24-7 uh, basis. Um, and then today we're going to uh, look at the schedules. Now this 24-7 basis, whether access granted or access denied, is dependent on if we have a specific schedule for this individual, either as a group uh, of individuals at a lock or a specific individual, which we can do uh, that as well. So um, looking at the, uh, the five lock profiles that we have here, uh, these are all privacy locks. Uh, we looked at those yesterday, uh, what they are and how you can use, uh, utilize these for different types of, uh, of openings. And uh, so we've got the, the two men's restrooms, first and second floor, the women's restrooms, first and second floor. I added one this morning uh, for the session that we're going to uh, be looking at or working with tomorrow on networks. And this is a networks privacy lock uh, that we, you know, I just named first floor guest restroom. And we'll, we'll talk more about the networks um, uh, tomorrow, but I created the profile the exact same way as I did the others. I added users just like I, uh, we did yesterday. And then today, uh, like I said, we're going to be talking about schedules. So uh, creating schedules is pretty easy. Um, and I know there's probably a lot of you out there saying, yeah, I've been trying to do those schedules for years and I just hadn't gotten the knack of it. Well, hopefully before uh, we finish today, uh, you'll feel more comfortable in creating these schedules. Now, uh, one thing about our schedules is our schedules are uh, designed uh, the way that you create them for each specific lock. We do not have access groups, okay? Some of you may be familiar with that term, access groups. 
Um, in a uh, enterprise uh, software like uh, Continental Access, Linnell, um, you know, uh, Software House, uh, Secure 9000, S2, any of those, most of those have access groups. And the way that works is you create an access group, uh, you throw some locks in there, you throw some people in there, you throw schedules in there, and then everything works off of that access group. All the people that are in the, in the group uh, are assigned to the, all of the locks that are in that group, and they're bound by all the schedules in that group. Well, we don't do that. Uh, um, so I said all that to say we don't do that. Ours are built a little bit differently. Like I said, they're lock specific. So I create a schedule, I put it in a lock. I create a schedule for users and I put it in the lock. I create uh, another schedule for another lock. Now it doesn't mean that I can't take that same schedule that I created, say for the first floor men's restroom and that I, uh, uh, I can't, it does not mean that I cannot add that to the second floor men's restroom. I can, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but when we create these schedules in the schedule screen here, it is for a specific lock. And you see up here at the top header, we're working with the ABC company. That's the account that we're working with. And it's for the first floor men's restroom. Okay. So that's the lock that we're working with. Now, if I switch over, say I go to uh, click on the uh, second floor men's restroom, see how that header uh, changes here, okay? So this is the lock that you're actually working with, okay? Now, our schedules are uh, actually two pieces, okay, if you want to think of it this way. We have the time zone piece, which uh, has all of your time parameters. It has your month, your day of the month, your day of the week. Uh, your start time and your stop time that you want that event to occur, okay? That's your time parameters. Uh, I call this the when portion. When do you want the schedule to take effect? Then we have the schedule entry, which is the what portion, okay? What do you want to happen during a specific time zone? And you tell on this event, uh, when you go to event number one down here, and you tell it what event you want it to, uh, to happen, you also tell it what time zone, because we can have multiple time zones. Right now, there's only one. But if I need more, I just click the Add button and just keep clicking, and it'll uh, add more time zones. Now, one thing that we've done in version 5.5.3 is we have allowed you to be able to rename this time zone, which is actually pretty nice, because in trying to figure out, okay, which of these time zones is Monday through Friday, uh, 7.30 to 4.30. No, you can't tell. But now you can edit, okay, and just highlight that time zone and rename it. So we'll say Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30, okay, and then click Save. Now when I look at that list, I can see what, that, what those time parameters are. Now you'll notice that in these time parameters, this time zone area, there's not a year. Okay, there's not a full calendar. Okay, so I can't go and look up, you know, uh, what May 25th is uh, next year, uh, what day of the week it is. I can't make a schedule for more than, uh, sorry, uh, more than 365 days in advance. Okay, um, we uh, are set up to where we can create schedules for about 365 days in advance uh, because of the month and the day of the month and then the day of the week, okay? So since I have this now named as Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30, let's create a schedule um, with those time zone parameters. So I'm gonna leave the month and day of the month as all. I can change it to any, you know, any of the months that I want and then any of the day of the month that I want. So say you have a customer that has um, a specific schedule, uh, maybe they have extended hours or uh, they're now open on Saturdays uh, for, you know, starting, um, you know, December 1st or something for the uh, Christmas holidays. So you can do that. You can set it up for, you know, say all of, Dece all of the month is December for each day of the week. And then that schedule will only take effect during the month of December. Okay, you can have it set for all days of the month, 
um, and then you know set it up that way. But what we're going to do is we're going to set it up for Monday through Friday, no matter what month or day of the month it is. So what I do is I uncheck Saturday and Sunday under enable. Now I can right click my mouse under the enable and we have some preset uh, days of the week already set here. I can enable all week, just Saturday and Sunday, Monday through Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, you know, so we have those already set up. Okay. If you want to right click, now we need to change our start and our stop time. So like I said, the start time is going to be when the event starts, right? Um, so we would change that to 7.30 a.m. So we uh, just hit the drop downs to hit 7.30 a.m. And then our stop time is 4.30 p.m. So we change that to 4.30 p.m. Okay. Now I can go through here and change each one individually. Or again, I can right click my mouse and I have a few options. I can clear this single stop time, which I don't want to do. I can clear all of the start times, which I don't want to do. I want to set all as a current start. So I do that and it changes them all real quickly. Do the same thing for the stop time. Click on that time, right click, set all as current stop. Okay. So now I have my time parameters set. All months, all days of the month, as long as it's a Monday through Friday, starting at 7.30 a.m. and stopping at 4.30 p.m. Now that's part of it. That's half of the schedule. Now I need to tell the lock what to do during that time zone. So I'm just going to come down, describe it, and say this is a, a unlock, or we'll just name it, uh, say, passage mode, Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30, Okay. However you want to describe it, doesn't matter, right? Now, the user or group, we don't need a user or group in this particular case because I'm not affecting a user or a group of users. I'm affecting the lock itself. So if I'm affecting the lock itself with a passage mode, I leave the user or group blank. Now, I come over to my event, and I pull uh, down the menu, and I have a few options. I have unlock and lock. I have passage mode by group one open window, relay activation by group one open window, and enable group four by group one open window. Now we'll talk about the open windows in a little bit, but I pick the event that I want to occur at my start time, okay? So I pick unlock. If I were to pick lock, then the, the lock would start locking at 7.30. And then it would unlock, which is the opposite of stop unlocking or stop locking means unlock at 4.30 p.m. So this lock would be unlocked from 4.30 through midnight overnight until 7.30 in the morning. That's opposite of what we want. So I choose unlock. So it's going to unlock at 7.30 and then lock back at 4.30. Now I have to tell it what time zone I want to use. So I want this door to unlock during this time zone, which is named Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30. So I hit the drop down, pick Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30, and now my schedule has been created, okay? Now there's a difference between being created and being assigned to that lock. For me to assign the schedule to that lock profile, then I have to either generate an open schedule view or generate schedule and close. Okay. Now I'm confident that my time and everything is correct and I could gen, uh, generate schedule and close. That way it will assign that schedule to that lock. And then when I program the lock, it will become effective starting tomorrow at 7.30 AM. Okay. That's an important thing to remember. Okay. Because these are trigger events. Okay. What it means, what I mean by trigger event is everything on this line has to fall in place for that event to occur. So on Wednesday, all months and all days of the month at 7.30 a.m., that door will unlock. Now, that does not mean that if I program that lock right now, it is uh, 2.30 uh, central time. So if I program this lock right now, you would think that the lock says, oh, I'm supposed to be unlocked, and it unlocks until 4.30. It does not, okay? It has to see that trigger. It has to see that event 
for that event to occur. So the door will remain locked until 7.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now, I could, at the lock, I can go in and I can put the lock into passage mode at the keypad with the uh, function 45 at the keypad, and then at 4.30, then, which would be the next trigger event, and it'll lock the door back, okay? So if you need to unlock that door for the rest of the day until that uh, stop trigger, then you can do that with a passage mode. You can uh, put, the, put the lock into passage mode with the function 45 at the keypad. And then it will trigger at 4.30 to lock the door. And then tomorrow morning, it will unlock. Okay. So let's generate an open schedule view just so we can look at it. So when you click to open the schedule view, it has a confirmation. Are you sure you want to overwrite all previous data? I'm going to say yes. Now, what this means is if there was anything in this lock profile right now as far as schedules, it's going to erase all of those schedules and then it's going to put into all of the, uh, put all of the schedules that are listed here, all the events that are listed here in the schedule entry into that lock as new events. Okay. So yes, we want to do that. So we're going to click yes. And now you see your schedule entry. You have your two trigger points. We consider Monday through Friday as a single event. Okay. If you didn't, then you'd have 10 events. One, uh, two events for Monday, one to unlock and one to lock. Two events for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, one of the reasons we did this is in the beginning with the DL2800, the DL3000, and the DL3500, those three lock models only had 150 scheduled events capable of being programmed into it. Okay, so here's two. So we condensed it for Monday through Friday to be two events. Otherwise, we would be taking up 10 events, which now is quite a few more than just the two. So the two events are Monday through Friday, all months, all days of the month, at 7.30 a.m., the door will unlock. If we, program, like I said, if we program this lock past 7.30 a.m., then the door will stay locked until that event shows up in the calendar again, which would be tomorrow morning. And then at 4.30 p.m. today, the door will lock back or tomorrow or whenever day, uh, day you have listed. Okay. Now, there are a couple of times when you would need to be able to keep this door, prevent this door from unlocking. And those would be what we call a holiday schedule. So a holiday schedule can be not just for holidays like Memorial Day or uh, Thanksgiving or things like that. It could be for, you know, okay, we're going to be closed next week for inventory or we're going to be closed uh, the week of July for the entire week of July 4th for vacation or whatever the case is. If it's something that you can schedule in advance, then that would be considered a holiday schedule. Now, the way we create that is we have to have another time zone. Okay. So we're going to click over to time zone number two. I'm going to edit that. And I'm going to say, um, uh, May 25th, um, lock door or whatever, um, or, you know, however you want to name it, whatever you want to name it. So I go to May 25th lock door. So this is going to be my Memorial day holiday. Now in the other time zone, we had a start and a stop time with this particular uh, type of time zone. I don't need my stop time. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to clear all stop times. I'm just going to erase them. I don't need them. Now, so I need to set this holiday for the month, May, the day of the month, 25th, on Monday. Okay. Because Monday, Memorial Day, uh, the fourth Monday of the month, is May 25th this year. Now my start time must be the exact same start time as what my unlock is. I don't set it for midnight and say that it will keep it un or keep it locked all day. I have to set it for the exact same time. So I change my times, um, my start time 
to 7.30 a.m., okay? And then I uncheck all days of the week except for Monday, okay? Now I describe this, Memorial Day, holiday, 2020. Now, you might wonder why I put 2020 in there. I put the year in there so I know when I come back and look at this after New Year's or whatever time of the year that I'm going to adjust all of my uh, holiday schedules, I know that if I've not edited the year that I've not changed this one. So it kind of gives me a visual cue, Memorial Day and Labor Day and Thanksgiving and all the other holidays that you observe or your customers observe, it gives me that visual cue that I've not changed that for the year 2021, okay? Now again, I don't need a user or group number here, but I do pick my event and I'm going to pick lock. And then I pick my time zone, which is May 25th, okay? Or you could have put Memorial Day or whatever in there that you want. And now, at 7.30 a.m., and we're gonna, let's open the schedule view here. So you can see that on only on Monday, May 25th at 7.30, the door is told to lock, but it's also told to unlock at 7.30 on that Monday. Well, lock in our system, lock, a lock event always overrides an unlock event, okay? meaning that it has to be set at the exact same time. If I set it for 729, then the door will lock at 729. The next trigger points at 730 to unlock, and it will unlock the door, and it will be unlocked all day. You could set it for 731, but then the door is going to be unlocked for one minute. Okay, Set it for the exact same start time. That way, the lock event basically tells the unlock event uh, don't worry about it today. You got a day off. We're not going to do you today. Okay. So it will override it and it will keep the door locked. Okay. So you go through and you set all of your holidays, you know, whatever your customers holidays are, whatever your holidays that you observe the 10 or 12 or however many it is. And you set all of them throughout uh, for the year. Now, next year, like I said, you'll need to go in and adjust those. Now, there are three holidays that you won't have to adjust ever, okay? And those are New Year's Day, thanks, uh, I'm sorry, not Thanksgiving, New Year's Day, 4th of July, and Christmas Day. The reason is because we always observe those on the same day of the month every year, no matter what day of the week it is, okay? So we're gonna clear those stop times. I wanna check the mark uh, box all, and I'm going to set it for 7.30 a.m., the exact same start time, okay? So all January 1st, no matter what day of the, the week it is, we're going to keep the, the door locked. Okay, well, I can't spell today. Now, this one is 2021 because we've already passed January 1st, okay? So lock and then time zone three or however you name it. And then uh, July 4th, December 25th, okay? So that will keep you from having, you know, at least three of the 10 or however many that you don't have to adjust on a yearly basis. Now, since this is for all, you can change that to all. So now you know that that's New Year's holiday, all New Year's holidays, not just a certain year, okay? Anybody have any questions on passage mode and holiday schedules? Okay, these are a little different, okay, um, than what you're probably used to. But you do a couple of them here or there, and you'll get you'll get the feel for it. Okay, now I'm going to jump over here to well, let's say we've gone uh, before I jump to um, to another lock. We've got the second floor men's restroom. Okay, 
it's going to have the exact same holidays as, um, you know, this first floor men's restaurant. It's going to have the exact same holidays, exact same schedule. So instead of having to come over here to the second floor men's restroom and retype everything, but you notice that my time zones are still there. Okay. So yesterday I mentioned a couple of terms, global and local. Global meaning it can be used from lock profile to lock profile. Local meaning it's just for that specific lock profile. So the time zones are global. I can reuse the time zone as long as I don't change it. I can reuse it from one lock profile to the next. Local, the schedule entry, is for that one specific lock. Now what that allows us to do is to go in here and save this uh, set of schedules. Okay, I've got all of my schedules in here, all of my holidays, everything in here. I click on save. All right. So now I'm going to, um, I'm just going to name it as the ABC company. And then I'm going to click OK. Uh, yes, I know it's already in there. I'm going to replace it. OK. So now I have this entire uh, set of schedules saved. Now I can come over to the second floor men's restroom and I can import that schedule and click OK. Sure you want to do this? Yes. It's imported successfully. And there's my events. Now, I still have to generate it. OK. It's not saved in that profile yet, but I have to generate it. So I'll generate an open schedule view. And there's my, my schedules. So that's a quick way to uh, create schedules um, from in one lock profile and then move those or add those, copy and paste basically, those into another lock profile. Okay. All right. Now, let's look at um, a different type of schedule, but it's created the same way. Okay. You still have your start and stop time uh, and your holidays and all of that. And that is user or group schedules. Okay. Told you that we can put users, uh, multiple users into a group. We have the four, uh, the four groups available uh, per lock, okay? Only four, all right? So we have that. Now, this first floor uh, women's restroom, I want to create a schedule um, that allows group one, which I put all the, the women, all the female in, uh, females in that group, group one. And I want to allow their credentials to unlock the door only during certain times. Okay. So I have to set my parameters because this uh, is going to be different from anything else. Then we uh, create another time zone. And we're going to say this is going to be Monday through Saturday, 8.30 a.m until 5 p.m., okay? Just say 8.30 to 5, all right? Monday through Saturday. Now, and we're gonna say uh, group one, uh, schedule uh, Monday through Saturday, 8.30 to 5 p.m., okay? Now, because this is for group one, I pick the number one out of this list, okay? This is a list of all of the users that are assigned to that lot, okay? And the event, oh, my events have changed. I don't have lock and unlock anymore. Now it changes to enable, disable group. So I'm gonna pick enable group because that's what I want to happen at my start time, my 8.30, my time zone, number four, and then if we look at the schedule view, now you can see I'm enabling group one at 8.30 a.m. Monday through Friday, and then another event for Saturday, and then two more events to disable the group Monday through Friday and Saturday. Now you go through, you set up your holidays uh, the same exact way. If you need them in this lock, you may not need them in this lock, um, you know, because it's 
a, a restroom, it's probably an interior door. You know, if they can't get in the exterior, then they can't, you know, so it may not matter that you, uh, you don't need the holidays in here, but if you do just add them in again, like I said, uh, holidays, you would create, um, your time zone without the stop time. So you would remove, I'm sorry, clear all of your stop times. Okay. Just like you did, uh, we did with, um, the holidays for the passage mode, but instead of, um, um, lock or locking the door, it would be group one, disable group, and then the time zone. Okay. Set up the exact same way. Right. So you've got your holidays, you've got your group enable, you got all of that. Okay. Now, um, let's look at, because we only have four groups, let's look at a way around that limitation of four groups. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a schedule for an individual or maybe two or three individuals. Okay. So let's say um, we've got uh, two janitors that work Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 6 p.m. until 9 p.m. And we need to set up a schedule for them to be able to open these doors. So we need, again, we need another time zone. So let's say time zone number five, okay? And we're going to set our time for uh, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., okay? We're going to right click, set all as current. And then we're going to right click Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because they're only here Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now I have to know what their user number is out of this list. How do we get that? Well, we highlight the door or the profile, click on the lock icon, and that brings up the lock data screen. Okay. It brings up all of my users with their names, their user number, their credential, whatever it is, whether they're enabled at the lock or not. So let's say, um, let's say Easter Bunny and Tom, okay, are my two janitorial staff. So I got number 14 and number 22. So I go back to my schedule. I pick user number 14, enable user, time zone five, okay. Now, for number 20, for the other person, I do the same thing. I can reuse that time zone as many times as I need to. It doesn't matter because it's doing different things. I'm, I'm doing, I'm enabling user 14 as a one specific user and doing the same for user 20. Now, if we look at the schedule view, oh, now I've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. Okay. I got six events for user 14, enable, there are three for the three days, and disable. And then I have six more for user number 20. Okay. So I can, I can do that. I can reuse a time zone within the same lock to do different things or different individuals. Now, if let's just go with the same theme here, these people also need to get into the women's restroom uh, up here uh, on the second floor. Well, I can save and then import. But one thing we need to make sure of is that users number 14 and 20, Tom and Peter, or the Easter Bunny, whichever one it was, uh, these two individuals, that their user number is the same user number in this lock. It may or it may not be, okay? So if we look at the, the screen here, Tom is number 14 and uh, Peter is number 20. So it's the same. It just happens to be the same, but it could not be, okay? It could be different. So that's one thing you need to be aware of when you are uh, you know, using a, a, a schedule for different lock profiles 
you need to make sure that if it's a, for an individual user, that that user number is the same in each lock that you're wanting uh, that schedule to be in. Okay. Right. Now, let's go back here and we're going to look at one final uh, type of schedule. Okay. I told you that we have these open window schedules. Okay. What exactly is an open window schedule? Well, if you're familiar with the first person in or first manager in, okay, that's what these are. Okay. So what this means is group one, anybody that is assigned into group one, if they present their credential inside a window of time that we're going to create with this time zone, the start and stop, then they will put it into passage mode or they'll activate the relay or they'll or they will enable group four. Okay. They'll do whatever we choose here. Okay. So to create the window, we have to decide when is the earliest we want these individuals to activate whatever it is we're going to activate. Um, and then what the final time is. So it's that window of opportunity for group one to either do any of the three, whatever it is. So we have to create that window. So let's say on this door, we want that window to be 7 a.m. to say 10 a.m. Okay, that's my window. It's a three hour window. All right, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. We'll just say all here, okay, just to make it easy. All right, now we would describe it and we would pick the event. What do we want it to do? Let's say passage mode, okay, and then time zone number seven. So this door will only go into passage mode if someone from group that's assigned to group one presents their credential to the lock between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Now, we've told it when to go into passage mode, but we haven't told it when to lock back yet. So that's going to require another time zone. That's going to require us to clear all of the stop times, just like a holiday schedule. But instead of setting the start time for the exact same start time as our other uh, event, we set this for the time that we want the door to lock back in this case. So let's say 5 p.m. Okay, 5 p.m. Now we would describe it, pick lock for the event, and time zone eight. And let's look at the schedule view. Now, the window opens at 7 a.m. for group one to put the door into passage mode. If they show up at 6.59, the door stays locked. And if their credential is allowed access, if it's enabled, they'll be able to open the door, but it won't put it in passage mode. The window closes at 10 a.m. Again, if they show up at 10.01 and present their credential, the door will open, it will unlock for them, and then lock back if their credential is enabled, okay? And if they do happen to put the door into passage mode, it will lock back at 5 p.m., okay? So this type of schedule with just two, ev uh, two event numbers here and three events total in the lock, this prevents me from having to set up holiday schedules, uh, prevents me from having to worry about events that are out of my control where no one shows up, such as snow, ice, um, natural weather events, hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever the case is. Okay. That just prevents me from have, worrying about the door being unlocked and no one being on the property. Again, like I said, this does not prevent outside of that window. If your credential is valid, it does not prevent you from go uh, from entering the door, but it won't put toggle it into passage mode. Now, if I was going to set it up, say, for uh, instead of passage mode, I want it to be, I only want my, my uh, users in group four to be enabled only if I have 
someone from group one there. So I just pick the event. Then instead of lock, I will pick my user or group number four. I'll pick disable group and then time zone eight. Doing the same thing, created the exact same way, but instead of unlocking the door, I've now enabled group four to where their credentials will work and then they stop working at 5 p.m. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about uh, any of the schedules we've looked at? Like I said, if you're if someone's typing, I'll, I'll just say this. Like I said, a couple things that you need to remember with our schedules. Okay, if it's a passage mode, it has to see that trigger, or no matter what it is, it has to see that trigger point. Okay. If it, it will not automatically do whatever we've told it to do in between. So if I program this lock between 7.30 and 4.30 um, and it's a passage mode schedule like this one is, it will not go into passage mode if I program in between. I must either wait until the next day for it to trigger or I have to put the lock into passage mode at the keypad and then it will take it out with the trigger, okay? That and um, your um, open window schedules are a fantastic way to not have to worry about putting in uh, holidays, okay? Now, let's go over uh, now and look at some features that we have available. Uh, with these locks. Okay, so we're going to talk about some of these. There's a couple of features that I really, really like. Okay, we've been talking about passage mode and open window schedules and holidays and what happens if no one shows up and so forth. Let's look at the features here. Let's look at this group two toggles passage mode. Okay, now this as a group entry mode prevents me from having to create a schedule that puts the lock into passage mode and prevents me from having to set up a whole bunch of holiday schedules. I don't have to worry about whether someone's there or not. Okay. If someone shows up, they present their credential and they're in group two, it will take the lock and toggle it from locked mode to unlocked mode. Present the credential again, it locks it back. Just like you're, if you were using a hard metal key, stick it in the door, unlock it. You know, if it's a you know whatever type of door, you unlock it and it goes into passage mode. It stays unlocked for the for the day until you physically put a key in and lock it. Same concept here, but we're doing it electronically. Now the other one, group two enables, group three disables passage mode. It's doing the same thing, toggling into and out of passage mode, but we are using two different groups to accomplish this. Group two puts it into passage mode, group three takes it out. And uh, I know somebody's thinking, well, can I be in both groups at two and three? No, not if you're using this. You can be, in both groups, but you will never be able to uh, enable passage mode. Remember what I said about lock always overrides unlock? Okay, well disable passage overrides enable passage. Okay, think of it as fail secure if you want to. Lock is always going to do with conflicting information, it's always going to do what's most secure for the lock, which is to stay locked. Okay. Now, um, we do have an entry delay. Um, I don't know why you'd want to use it. Uh, we do have it though. Um, just had a, uh, actually, uh, one of my, one of the reps out in Southern California say they, they have a customer that needs a lock on a gate. It's a dementia ward at a hospital. And they want to, uh, in case somebody, you know, one of the uh, uh, patients is able to get a code or a card or whatever they're going to be using to open the gate, and they want to prevent them from, you know, going right out the gate. 
So they're going to use a double-sided lock. Well, you can put this into an entry de uh, a delay, and that happens on the double-sided. It works on both sides for 5, 15, or 45 seconds. So say it's a 15-second delay. It's like a delayed egress panic bar. Okay, Same concept. We're delaying their ingress and egress with a double-sided lock. Okay, But if you are a, a mass, if you have the master code or if you're a manager, it doesn't affect you. It only affects users 12 and above, those basic users in the global screen. Okay, so you could use it for that if you wanted to. All right. Now let's look at the 4000 series tab here. Uh, as we, as I told you yesterday, when we created this lock profile, that little wizard popped up and asked you how you wanted it to be configured. Well, you can configure it how you want to in the wizard, and then you can come back and you can always change it. So yesterday in the wizard, I had uh, had it set up as privacy feature mode one. And that means we disable the keypad and the prox reader on the button press. The duration by default, and I changed this earlier in the other class, in the other session, but the privacy duration is defaulted to 10 minutes. But you can change that duration all the way up to 250 minutes before it resets on its own. So after 250 minutes, it will automatically reset and go back out of privacy mode. Well, what if you need it longer than that? Well, we have a 251. The 251 means that it's privacy forever until the inside lever is turned. Okay, then it resets the lock. All right, so I would definitely recommend if you use the privacy locks, go more than 10 sec or 10 minutes, maybe go up to 20, something like that, because there is no warning, okay, right now, right now, there is no warning if the privacy uh, is coming out, if the lock is coming out of privacy mode, okay? So you can set that for whatever you want. Now, I had somebody ask in the uh, morning session, well, what if somebody opens the door, pushes the button, and lets the door close? Okay, they just put it in privacy mode. It's not gonna stay in privacy mode because the timer, number one, is gonna take it out. You can always open it with the key uh, override and the manager's codes and the master code will always open the door. And those, the, the administrative users, the manager and the masters, they will uh, reset the lock, okay? If, the, if that code is used, it will reset the lock back to uh, out of privacy. Now, I can also check the box, leave unlocked on exit. So with the privacy mode, I can, when I turn the lever and I exit, it puts it into a passage mode. And then when you push the button, it locks the door and it disables the keypad. Now, if you notice, it says down here, residency feature is designed to prevent un unintentional lockouts. Select check boxes one and two to enable residency. All right, so I uncheck the privacy and check cancel passage on button press. So what this does is leave the lock unlocked on exit. So when I'll go out to get my paper, I open the door, walk out, it puts it into passage mode. I go get my paper, I come back, I walk in without having to put a code in, and then uh, push the button and it cancels passage mode. Now, it might be used for you know a conference room, um, you know any you know any number of things. Uh, it does not disable the keypad, okay? So somebody can walk in, so it does not do that, but. Uh, it does give you that option. Now for privacy, you check the box again and it automatically unchecks the cancel button, uh, cancel passage on button. I can't have both of these checked at the same time. Okay. Now I want to look at some other locks here. Um, a, bit, a very popular lock on the market is the PDL 1300, the aluminum storefront. If you notice, why is that? Why that shouldn't have shown up there? Got a glitch in the software. Uh, let's see if I have another one here. No, I don't. Okay. Well, normally the 1300, I got a glitch in my software. 
normally in a, a PDL 1300, the only tab that you'll have is the options tab. This will not, should not be there. Okay. I don't know why that showed up there, but you only have the options tab. Okay. So let's, uh, let's do this real quick. New lock profile. We'll just say it's a PDL 1300. All right. So there's my, there's my new one. Okay. Go under features. There's no other tab, but the options tab. So it has the group entry modes, but it does not have anything else. Okay. Unlike the DL 2800, which is a very popular lock. Oh, it doesn't have the group entry modes, but it does have a remote tab, but it's only momentary release. Okay. You, we have those two white wires that go through the door. Okay. we got that bundle of 11 wires. You have a red and black for the battery pack. You have um, a red and black that is for the uh, motor. You have another red and black that is for external power. You can actually hook up, uh, run the wires, uh, the red and black uh, wire out to a transformer. And you can run off of the transformer and then have the batteries as a backup. You have the two white wires, which are for remote release. Again, you can run those wires out to like a doorbell button or something. And when you push the button, it closes the circuit. It unlocks the door, just like someone entered a code. And then we have uh, three extra wires, which are yellow, uh, blue, and green. That's for a relay output. Okay, So we can trigger something else away from the lock. Your alarm panel, we can shunt the alarm. We can uh, access a video camera and turn it on, a uh, recorder, um, you know, a light or a bell or a buzzer or something like that. So we have that. So look at the features of the locks uh, and you can, in the software, you can see what features are available. You know, uh, that those group entry modes are nice, but it's not available in the DL2800. Another popular DL3000 don't have the group entry modes in it either. We have the relay, 2800 doesn't have a relay, but we have the relay and we have the remote, but it's momentary only. Those two are the 2800 and the 3000, DL3000 are cylindrical locks. So is the DL3200. Let's look at the features. We have the group entry modes. We have a remote toggles passage versus just momentary only. So now here's another way that you can prevent having to set up uh, schedules to put the lock into passage mode. Have the, to have the remote toggle passage on and off. And this is where I'm going to show you these. Okay. You have a wireless remote receiver. Okay. That wires into the two white wires. It has two sets of red and black that plug in line with the battery pack. This receiver goes inside the battery compartment of the cylindrical locks. Yes, it will fit. Okay. You have uh, a single button wireless transmitter. As you push the button, receiver closes the circuit, unlocks the door. We have the four button key fob. You have up to four locks that you can pair uh, or four receiver, uh, receivers that you can pair to this transmitter. So you can have up to four locks. Push button number one, number one lock opens. Okay. I can pair up to 50 five zero transmitters to a single receiver. And it can be a combination of single button and four button key fob. Okay. So now you have the ability to have a wireless remote release that will work up to about 75 feet away. So now you can have the front door or the back door, or whatever door, remote toggles passage. Right? You don't have to put schedules in. Right? Now, um, those are the most common types of locks. Uh, your exit trims, most of your exit trims are going to have the group, or all of them are going to have the group entry modes. It's going to have the remote capabilities. Okay, going to have the relay, but look at the lock pro. Or if you're trying to figure out what locks have what features, 
create a profile in your software, and then you can look at the features and see what's available. Okay. All right. Anybody have any questions about anything that we've covered today as far as schedules, features, anything like that? No? Okay. Well, the last thing that I want to talk to you about. Yeah, oh, I do have. Uh, i got one here. Uh, okay. No, sir. No, sir. All right. Um, the last thing I want to talk to you about is just kind of give you a little brief overview of what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. Okay. That's networks. Okay. The networks locks, like I've said many times uh, over the past couple of sessions, is the way you create the profile, the way you add the users, the way you do everything about the networks in the software is the exact same as a T3 lock. One of the main differences is the way you program it. Okay. So I'm going to skip over to this other account here, which these are all networks locks. I have Yes, we do have an aluminum storefront networks lock. We have architect series. We have exit trims. We got all the different models, and we'll, I'll show you uh, some of those tomorrow. But the gateways, this is how we program them, okay? With the T3 locks, we have to either upload the information to a, a data transfer module, or I have to take my laptop out with a PCI cable, plug into each one individually, and upload the information or retrieve the information. With the networks locks, we have a device called a gateway. Okay, A gateway sits on your network uh, or on a um, uh, self-contained network, on an independent network. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to have access to the internet. Um, it's just an internal or an intranet, if you want to call it that. It has no access from the outside. So these gateways uh, sit on the network. They have mul You can have multiple locks assigned to them. As you can see, I have two gateways here in this account. Each one of them has seven locks assigned to it. So in my office, I have 14 locks. Yes, you can imagine what my wife thinks about my office with all these locks. But I have 14 locks. All right. So what I can do is I can actually remotely program these locks. So say this, uh, we'll just say the CEO's office here, this uh, architect series lock. If I want to program it, I go under communication, communicate with the selected networks lock. And yesterday, I don't know if it was in the afternoon session or the morning session, but they asked, can you do more than one thing with the DTM? Meaning, can you send the program and receive the log at the same time? No with the DTM, but yes with the uh, networks. So I can check the box, send and receive all, hit start. Now it's going across my network. Okay, It's going from the software to the gateway through the network. When it gets to the gateway, it transfers or changes the information over to a radio, and the radio sends the information to the lock. Okay, So uh, it's not Wi-Fi. Uh, communication. It's not Zigbee. It is a radio. Okay. So you can see here with my event log, uh, the different things that have happened over uh, time. So on the 28th today, I returned the system to normal. I actually entered into a lockdown earlier today, which means that that's one thing that we can do. I can go to the emergency tab and I can click on emergency lockdown and now my software is sending a command to all the gateways. I've got two. It's sending, it sent the command to the gateways and it's told them um, to send the command to all the locks to go into a lockdown. Okay. So you can see that the command has been received by the gateways. Now I'm hearing all the locks start the motors to turn, lights are blinking, everything's going off, and everything is in a lockdown. Okay. And the lockdown, it locks the doors if they were in an unlock mode and it disables all of the basic users. Okay. So that's what we need uh, in the world nowadays. It's a, it's a sad thing to say, but we do need that capability. Right. So 
uh, I can lock down up to 2,000 locks in under 10 seconds. Okay. So, yes, I know the waiting for status, it's waiting for that status to come back. It's taking longer than 10 seconds, but um, that's just uh, the software and the gateways rechecking with all the locks to make sure they're in lockdown. Okay. So we are in lockdown. Now, I can show you that by going back to the uh, gateways here. You can see that the status says lockdown, but I can also go under locks and view the gateways lock table. I'm going to refresh it. And it'll show that every lock is in lockdown and it'll show the battery status of each lock. Okay? So the gateway is getting all its information from each lock. It's updating the status of each one. And there we go. So all of the locks are in lockdown and they all have good battery status. Okay. So uh, that's some of the things that we can do with the networks. We'll talk about more, uh, more about this tomorrow. Um, I'm going to show you how to actually discover a gateway. So inside here, we have all our gateways. I'm going to show you how to configure the settings because we have some network settings that we need to configure. Um, I'm going to show you a couple more things that I don't normally show people, but how to replace a gateway with a new one. Okay. Um, that way you don't have to default to all the locks and everything to take a gateway out. Maybe the board's gone bad or something has happened to it, uh, lightning strike or something. That way you don't have to default everything. I'm show you how to do that. Uh, we're going to look at some other things as far as expanders and, and other things with the networks. But if you're not signed up for one of, uh, one of the sessions tomorrow, we're going to go uh, pretty heavy into the networks. Um, you know, because we've done everything. We've created all the lock profiles. We've done everything that we need to do um, other than, you know, set the system up as far as the um, uh, gateways and everything. So uh, sign up for one of those sessions tomorrow. Uh, if you uh, don't have my email address, there's my email address. You can see it there at the bottom of the screen. So I do want to thank you for attending today, unless there's a question. Uh, if anybody has a question, uh, nobody, anybody? Okay. Well, if not, uh, I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. Uh, looks like Travis is uh, off. So uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to send me an email. Uh, I appreciate your time today and uh, come back tomorrow and we will uh, talk about network. All right. Thank you for your time today, folks.